Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Upper Room Fellowship of Jesus Christ Friday Bible Study. I'm um, Pastor Tyrone Bennett. I have Pastor Nika Geary with me, and we will continue with Proverbs chapter 6, part 2. But before we start, let us pray. Now, Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this time. It's time to just be in your word and just time to be in the study, and we just pray you uh you are in the midst of us, Lord. We know where two or three are gathered. You are in the midst. And we just surrender this whole study over to you. We ask you to anoint it and bless us and give us much revelation. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, previously we in, um, talked about Proverbs chapter 6, verse 3. And it says, so do this, my son. And deliver yourself, for you have come into the hands of your friends. Go and humble yourself. Plead with your friend. And um, we were just talking about how you know, we get in situations where we uh, make promises or we can't keep or, or, bound. or bound. Amen. Absolutely. And, um, and the Lord just says, just admit it and come clean and just say you can't do it you know we we can't do it we can't do it and so um, but we shouldn't let it be hanging and lingering and that's the thing because i know a lot of times people make vows and they say they're going to do things and they just you know forget about it or they just let it go and and don't address the issue but the lord is teaching us that we should go and humble ourselves and just admit that we can't do what we should do or we that we pledge to do and just be okay with that. Amen. 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 Any comments about that or we okay? Okay. And then verse nine, it says, how long will you slumber or slur when you rise from your sleep? You know, we live in a world where you know, everyone, the, those that are not in Christ are just asleep. You know, we, we see that and, and we know that, you know, it's no fault of their own because we know that, um, you know, the devil is rolling around like a roaring lion, seeing who yeah, he can devour and, and to keep people as far from Christ as, as he can. And so um, we pray for them. Amen. And we, uh, uh, learn how that they hopefully will rise from their sleep and come to Christ. Amen. 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 Any comments about that? Okay. Well, let's continue. We will continue on starting at Proverbs 6, starting at verse 12. And it says, A worthless person, a wicked man, walks with a perverse mouth. And then some comments. You know, this is, you know, those who are not in Christ, this is those things that they do. You know, they speak ill against people. They applaud and they scream and they're just not walking in the ways of the Lord or in the commandments or, you know, and... And we should just be aware that there are people that are like this, that do not walk in the ways of the Lord. And in this Proverbs, it calls them worthless people, wicked men. And, and um, so we just, this is just a warning to show us that, you know, not everyone is honest people or trustworthy people or walk in integrity. They're not. Because... Um, like I said before, the devil's roaming around like a roaring lion, devouring people. And we have come to learn that, you know, it's really not the person. It's the spirit that's on the people that cause all of this wickedness and for them to walk this way. And so we um, we understand that. Amen. Amen. Any comments? And this goes well with the study last Friday when we talked about vows and the words that we speak, um, it's very 
either we speak life or speak death yeah. or or we speak a vow and we can't keep it and we have to <laughs> repent for that. Um, Amen. But in Matthew 12, verse 34, it says, uh, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. Amen. Amen. So really, whatever we say, God will hold us accountable. Amen. Amen. He records it. <laughs> it's written in the book, sounds like, you know. You know, and it's, it's not really, I mean... I mean, I know that evil people get pleasure in speaking evil against people. I mean, it's just something that they do. They get a joy or, or they're happy about it. Otherwise, why would you do it, you know? But then, too, it's a spirit as well. But um, but as Pastor Nike was saying, yes, either the words we speak, they either bring life or death. And, that's, and we always want to edify a person, not bring a person down. We want to lift them up. We want to, you know, give them hope and, and just uh, help them to feel better about the things they go through and and not just point fingers and accuse them and things like that. It's, it's not about that. You know, it's not about the problems or, or you know, who causes problems. It's about how to solve it. And we know that the Lord will solve all our problems. Amen. 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 Any comments? And Two problems. things. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, two things. Uh, wanted to add what Pastor Nike was saying about what Jesus was saying about our our words. He said it's not what goes into a person's mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of our mouth that's what defiles us. Amen. So, uh, and but the truth is the heart is desperately wicked who can know it only god does so when we hear about being careful what we say and everything else ultimately god's going to cause things to come out of us that we didn't even know were there so it's not to condemn us i know it says that you know with the the words that we use will be condemned but that's for those who aren't surrendered to christ the truth is he's going to let us see what we can't see and when we see it, that's when we confess it and we give it to him. We surrender it to him. And then he transforms our heart to have good things come out of it. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor C. Any other comments? In Proverbs 17, verses 27 and 28 says, he who has knowledge spares his words, and a man of understanding is of a calm spirit. Even a fool is counted wise when he holds his peace. <laughs> when he shuts his lips, he is considered perceptive. Amen. Yeah. And it's so true. I find those that are, whenever it's a heated situation mm -hmm. or um, those who are wise, they... They think before they speak, they don't like react right away. Um, but yet again, it's so easy for our flesh to react and um, for the flesh to take over. But we really need God's help. We need his help. And like what Pastor Steve said, um, God puts us in situations where things come out of us that we didn't even know were there Amen. deep down uh, to begin with. But there's no condemnation. It's It's him changing us he, he's doing this work in us um like in the in the bible it says how do you make gold you would put it through the heat and the pressure yeah. and and scrape all the impurities that rise to the top um so praise the lord that it's um really is his love it, it's not condemnation it's not amen we have to go through the fire. Amen. 
Any other comments? In Proverbs 8, verse 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. Amen. 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 Any comments? Well, the fear of the Lord is the beginning mm -hmm. of wisdom. That's right. Yes. It just shows how how much the Lord really hates pride and arrogance and pride and arrogance is really the way of the world. And it's, you know, it's, it's hard to navigate it sometimes, you know, it's, it's everywhere around us. And especially these days where people are, it's like everybody's universe revolves around them. Amen. <laughs> Everyone's, it's kind of a, it's, it's like an age of being self-centered and, you know, um, and, and it's, it's, it can be disheartening sometimes when you are trying to operate by the grace of God the other way. You know, you can feel really, I mean, well, I shouldn't say you, I should say myself, is sometimes I feel, I get feeling like I can't win because it's all around me. Mm -hmm. um, and then the fear can set in of having that take some part of me and, and that it will rub off somehow. And as we all know, like what you said, Pastor Knight, it's so easily, easy to react from the flesh. Yes. And um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a hard thing to navigate. Uh, I just praise God for his patience with all of us and yeah. uh, his patience with me. You know, um, I, I just... For some reason, the last couple of days for me have been really difficult in this regard. Just feeling almost out of place in the in the in the in the area that I have to walk in. You know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, God doesn't like pride, um, and we can only, you know, there was this whole thing. When I w was raising my children, you know, how to build self-esteem in your child. Well, the only way we can have any kind of esteem in ourselves is through the blood of Christ. Amen. And he is the only way we are worth anything. Amen. Amen. And it's when we're in him that the gifts that he gives us can flourish. Yeah. And uh, not to be you know, become prideful about whatever gifts he may have given us, but knowing that it's only through him that that his work can be done in through the gifts that he's given his children. Amen. Amen. Any comments? Any other comments? No, Jesus to serve and not be and served. Serve. Amen. He, mm -hmm. he really came to just, he wasn't authoritative or, you know, he wasn't like, oh, I'm, I'm the king of kings, bow down to me or yeah. anything like that. He really came as a humble servant and um, he wants us to walk in his footsteps. Amen. Well, you know, Sister Joanna, you know, people are taught this. I mean, they taught that they need to have this pride and this arrogance to get respect in the world. You know, if you don't have that, then people are just going to walk all over you and, and you know, you're going to be, you know, in the hurt. And, and, you know, so we can see that, you know, that 
it's something that is passed on from generation to generation people you know and um but that's because they need Christ you know they don't have the Lord and they don't understand God's ways and Amen. you know and that's where we come in you know we you know we walk in the light you know and it doesn't matter what these people say and what they do and how they act you know you just continue to walk in the light and everything's going to be fine you know, they have no power over you. Amen. 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 Any other comments? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Steve? I have some. Oh, go ahead. Aiden. Oh, it's Rufus. Oh, that's <laughs> Rufus. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, well. Are you eating? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am. That's okay. But, but what I wanted to say is uh, when I first moved from the country to New Orleans and I was going to school there and, you know, the uh, kids said they immediately, you know, they didn't know why, but they knew there was something different about me. Some of the, uh, the you know, the boys there, they were like, oh, gosh. <laughs> They were very, uh, I was, I was, I was kind of a mild mannered, uh, quiet personality. And, but, but the other kids there, they, especially the, the kids my age, the, the boys, they would, they were like, they would tell me, uh, oh, you don't have to, uh, um, you, you got to gain some respect and, and be respected. You, you don't have to be all, you know, mild mannered and, and uh, they didn't use those words, but that's basically what they were saying. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you gotta, you gotta get some respect uh, and, and just, you know, you don't have to answer them. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that, that was very different from how I, I had been, you know, raised. I grew up on a plantation and I listened to my parents and 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 and, and the older uh, people around me, the older, even the older kids around me, I, I listened to them and I respected them and I I interacted with respect. And but they were taking that as weakness. And and so they were trying to teach me how to be strong and and um, defend myself or speak up and 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 those kinds of things and and uh, eventually some of that rubbed off on me but but I I kind of realized that you know no oh, this is not right you know because still what what I had been taught at home that stuck with me and around them I kind of. Uh, acted the way that they, according to what they would were expecting in me, and, and you know they like to get into um, scuffles with each other and and, and fights and 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 and, uh, and and they had little gangs that they were running around and, and so gosh, it's it's, it's kind of hard to go back and 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 just recover all of that. But it was tough for me then. It was tough because I had to change who I was, what was in me, my heart, really. I didn't realize it then, but it was my heart. I had a different heart than them. And, uh, and so I ended up somewhat changing to their way. And then and I realized that, no, no, I've got to be me. And so... Um, and I was, um, you know, my grandmother had all, had taught me about God, Jesus, and and all of that, and and and, and that wasn't it. I wasn't going to church then, but but still, I had respect for my elders and 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 you know, all the people and the teachers, and, but they didn't, and so that was the difference there. And, so 
you know, but they were they were proud and, and arrogant and, and I was kind of meek. That, that was the main difference there. And that's what they were trying to get me to be like them. And uh, in the end, I just I just stopped hanging out with, with them and I started hanging out with people that were more like me. And that kind of didn't resolve the issue, but it made it a little more comfortable for me to, you know, to, to live and being with people who was more like me. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Um, and, and now here I am. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm learning a whole different way of uh, dealing with the world around me and, 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 and seeking God in my life in his ways and so. So it's a even it's a, it's a more distinct transition from where I where I had gone to with all of that and through the rest of my life. Well, then I was just a teenager then, and then I went through all of you know the military and 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 all the other things that I learned that was going in a different direction. And um, but finally, God got hold of me, and and now now I'm here. So mm -hmm. I praise God for that uh, because, because this, this is where I need to be. And, and I know that now. I have no doubt about that now. It's not even a question. And I, I never, it was, it was just difficulty. I was wavering between two, uh, two, two, two sides, two different uh, persons and two different ways of, of, of handling myself. And for now, I, I know which way to go, you know, and not to say that I can always do it now, but I'm working on it. And I know God will get me there. I give myself to him. And that's what he's asked. He's really, he's asked me. He's put it in my heart. He said to me, you know, I, I want your heart. I want your heart. I don't, I don't want, I don't want you, you going, you're always trying to fix yourself and get there on your own. I want your heart, and so, so that's where I'm at, uh, everybody. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm trusting that God will bring me to where He wants me, uh, and that I'll be able to give Him my heart with, with a little help from Him. I will. Amen. 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 And Pastor Steve, uh, Pastor Rufus, I can, I can totally relate to what you're. You're talking about what you're going to, you know, being from the South, like you and I have been through, you know, it's a totally different upbringing, you know, it's, you know, especially when we're in the church and, and, um, and we'll learn, I mean, it's one, two things we learn, we learn right from wrong and we learn discipline. And those two things, they, you know, stick with us. You know, even when other people are not doing what's right. Right. Um, and we get trapped into doing the same thing sometimes. And, and we get persecuted and, and uh, punished, that's for sure. I mean, I've definitely been punished for doing other things that other people did, you know, and because I was supposed to know better. You know, but, you know, sometimes we get caught in situations and we just, you know, so we can totally understand this pride and arrogance in an evil way because, you know, when you, you know, get caught up in stuff and, and things just start happening, and, you know, but, but just like, you know, God knows our hearts, as you said, and God brings us back on track and, you know, we... You know, as Pastor Steve is always saying, there's some things we just can't learn in a book. We have to go through. And um, and I know you and I have been through a lot of things in our life. So praise the Lord, we're here now. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. You're right. Any other comments? Uh, I'll make it short. Just regarding pride and arrogance, uh, this came has come. I feel pretty strong about this. Um, that the Bible also talks about something called false humi humility. 
And that there could be a tendency when we see something like this to say, oh, no, I'm going to be humble. I'm going to be low. I'm going to keep it down. And all that that ends up being is our own works. And I believe the right approach to go to come to God is to search my heart and check if there's any iniquity in me, any pride, any arrogance, because the truth is we all have pride. And so God is looking as, as you just said, Pastor Tyrone is, is about uh, you know, just, um, well, I, I don't remember who said what, but anyway, it, it's about, about allowing God to, to reveal what's in our heart and that he will humble us. He will shape us into himself by revealing these things in us that we don't even realize we're prideful about. And so it always goes back to just surrender. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Amen. Steve. Amen. Any other comments? Okay, verse 13. He winks with his eye, he shuffles his feet, he points with his fingers. Oh, man. Quite a visual. <laughs> <laughs> Who is, who, who is he? Who is he we're talking about here, Pastor? The wicked. Yeah, the evil. Okay, the, okay. I didn't know the wicked. Okay. The, the evil, yeah. The wicked and evil people. Any other comments? Questions? That's, that's, that's them. That's what I, I remember seeing, that kind of behavior. Uh, yeah, they, they had, there was lots of antics among them and, and lots of ways of getting people's attention, make themselves look cool or however they wanted to project themselves. And they were always projecting themselves. You always not with quietness, but with gestures and 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 many times words, but not ordinary words. Just uh, words that they got from the streets or what, what you know from their environment. And so, yep, that's that's what I came. That's where I came from. That's where I dealt with for, yeah, as man. a teenager. Any other comments? In Isaiah 58, verse 9, Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger, and speaking wickedness. Amen. Amen. Well, the answer to all of this is the Lord. Amen. The Lord is helping you get through this now, Pastor, Pastor Rufus. Yes. Yes. Yes, but it, it takes work, though, because it, it doesn't just come out of you with a snap of a finger. And but I'm 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 working. God's working, not me. Uh, I'm working on giving it to him. That's my work. Well, you know, as someone said, these are things God's bring up so we can be healed. Like Pastor Mike was saying, like the gold that's got to come up and, you know, the dross is scraped off. Right. It's got to come out and you have to be healed. Amen. Amen. God knows. Any other comments? Verse 14. Perversity is in his heart. 
He divides evil continuously. He sows discord. Amen. Any comments? You know, we can see these things in our whole world right now. You know, our country is divided, they say, and people are just unhappy with everything that's going on. And it's just so much violence. And, and you know, it's, it's almost like in the times of Noah that there's evil just going around continuously. You know? but, um, but we know we just have to stay connected to the Lord for us and just pray for those people because... You know, we are in the days where um, times are just going to get worse and worse. And the evil that people do, they, it is continuously. Every day, someone's doing something bad or, or sowing, you know, because people just are not, their hearts are just not in the right place. You know, they don't want to know about the Lord and they don't want to hear the word. They don't want it, you know. You know, I won't say they all don't, but there are a great many few that do. But there are those who just don't want to have anything to do with God. And they speak against them. We see that all the time. They sow discord, as this verse says. But, you know, there's always hope. You know, the Bible tells us to pray for those who do evil against us. Pray for those who persecute us. Pray for those who plot and scheme and slander and do all those things. You just pray for them and let God change their hearts because he's the only one they can. Amen. Any other comments? In Genesis 6, verses 5 to 6. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. Amen. Amen. Only Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord Amen. during this time. And I think God is seeing this today. I think he's grieved of all the things that's happening now. You know, he's, he's seen the wickedness of man. You know, and it is continuously. People just, you know, turn to evil to solve their problems and to be guided in their ways. They don't look to the Lord. And I do believe that his heart is greed. Amen. In comments? Yes. Uh, to some extent, the way that it's paved is the wrong way. The way that, the way of the world, so to speak, and the way that the way society is structured in order to advance um, in many in many times is it's not the way of the Lord, it's, it's the way of the world. The world is structured so that when, when you are privy to its ways and its way of doing things, uh, it's easier to, so to speak, get the things that you need. Um, and, um, but, and, 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 and that's, the, that's the other thing that I, I deal with 
now is is that that I, I know that I have to in many ways revert back to some of the things that my grandmother taught me really because I think she had it right and uh, and she uh, on her deathbed she she had said to me the last her last words that she spoke to me was I want you to get in Jesus because I want to see you again so she knew that that was the way for me. She knew that that's what I needed in my life at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the last time I saw her, even though she lived for another year and a half before she died. But that was the last time I saw her alive. And I, I would never have, I won't see her again. Next time I see her would, uh, will be when we're both with the Lord. So, Amen. Well, she was a prophetess, for sure. In that regard, for sure. Amen. Any other comments? Verse 15. Therefore his calamity shall come suddenly. Suddenly he shall be broken without remedy. Amen. Well, we know that, you know, at some point in time, God is going to do something. Judgment will come and, you know, he's going to right all the wrongs and woe to those who you know, don't put their trust in him or their faith or follow him. Amen. And comments? In Second Chronicles 36, verses 15 to 16. And the Lord God of their fathers sent warnings to them by his messengers, rising up early and sending them, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his words, and scoffed at his prophets, until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people, so there was no remedy. Amen. Amen. Comments? No, it's, it's a sad thing. Praise the Lord. Verse 16. These 16 the Lord's hate. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for the next verse. Um, in Proverbs 8, verse 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Oh, you have this again. You have this again. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. It goes and with then... uh, a pride look and actually I probably should have put it after. Yeah, it's the okay. First, the first. It's all good. Yeah. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. Amen. You can see a proud look is number one. Amen. God does put things in order, and usually the first thing is the most significant and probably the first thing he deals with in a person. Yes.
Okay, we got the first three. <laughs> it's interesting that it says these six things the Lord hates. And yeah. we were weeks ago, um, there was someone who commented, like, God hates, God can't yeah. truly hate. Um, but it's it's really not the people per se, it's it's whatever is on them, yeah. whatever yeah. is on their heart that is not of love, because we know God is love. Amen. But someone said it's not the actual hating of the person, it's hating of the things that they do. Mm -hmm. Or like the pride that we have, or the lying we do, or you know, yeah. that's Shed what God hates. Blood. Yes, that's the thing that God hates. It's not, you know, and we we should understand that, you know, it's like knowing right from wrong. But if we don't know we have these things, we know that we have to give it to the Lord, and He has to. Take these things out of us. None of these things we can fix ourselves. It's all up to him. But we just have to recognize that we have them and surrender them to him. And, you know, like Pastor Steve said, we all have pride. We all, you know, you know, I guess we'll have lying time sometimes. And I don't know about shedding innocent blood, but, you know, But, Jesus even said in the New Testament, even if you're angry with someone else without a cause, you have committed murder. That's right. Amen. Right. So that in a sense, that is innocent blood could fall in it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any comments? Uh yes. Um we we lost something happened with the computer, so we came on with the phone, but uh, one of the things that was mentioned, um, you mentioned, Pastor Tyrone, is that God hates the sin, but yes. he loves the sinner. And, yes. um, and we need to remember that, you know, when we sin, he hates our sin, but he doesn't hate us. Amen. Um, he hates the behavior, but not the person. And um, that's something really we all really need to remember when we see things in other people that disturb us or make the disgust us even um, that God hates the sin, but he loves the sinner. He loves the person. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Joanna. Very well put. Any other comments? Yes, it. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Let's see what's going on. Okay. Um, it, it's kind of hard to even um, where it says hands that shed innocent blood, mm -hmm. even those that those that kill children. Those yeah. That, um, even in the schools, the shootings, the the crimes that happen, um, you know, even rapists too, and and it's can we say the same thing for them, for those as a people? And we just mentioned God does not hate them; the God hates the sin, the evilness that we've done. That's right. But not the person, and it's because we don't fight against flesh and blood it's not against people but against princes and principalities of the air uh, the works of darkness that are operating in them amen but the world don't want to understand that yes. that's for sure you know so if we were to be tested in this can we really love the person that had murdered someone yeah a good you know, question. We may say these things, but if we're actually before the Lord, do we still have love for them, or is there some sort of hatred towards them? Yeah, especially if it's one of our loved ones, you know, and how would that beat? I mean, 
It's only a work God can do in us. Amen. Amen. Uh, the other thing, and we talk, we definitely talk a lot about, you know, the spiritual forces that cause people to do things. And the other thing that God has war with is our flesh. Yes. So he, he, we're born again. We're well pleasing in his sight. We're, we're spiritual children that he loves, but he will be making war with our flesh. So our flesh is tainted. Our flesh is against God. And so that part of people of each and every one of us, he's the one dealing with it. He's the one revealing the things and basically helping us decrease so that he would increase. So there's so many uh, aspects of this, but ultimately, yes, he loves us. Praise the Amen. Lord. Amen. This reminds me of the song Forgiveness by Matthew West. Yes. And he shared a true story of a mother whose daughter died in a car accident. Um, because of a drunk driver mm -hmm. and the drunk driver was in court um but god really dealt with her heart yes to forgive him that her own daughter died and it, it was amazing because she you know she really felt god free her from unforgiveness Amen. it's not really when we forgive people it's not really you know about them it's really god liberating us that's like, right for us Amen. to not feel any more burden or carry anything um towards another person it's just giving it to him amen amen yeah it's, it's what does it say in the song you talked about we are the one who will set free yes. not them you know mm -hmm. And then she even pleaded with the judge to cut his sentence yeah. in half. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, I can't imagine like that drunk driver, he felt really bad. Yes. You know, he felt like, you know, he had just killed a person and um, he didn't felt worthy or anything. And yet the fact that her mother forgave him, like he, he was just, like it was beyond words what he felt um, to experience that forgiveness. Amen. Yeah, I remember that. Any other comments? In Psalm 101, verse 5. Whoever secretly slanders his neighbor, him I will destroy. The one who has a haughty look and a proud heart, him I will not endure. Amen. Amen. So there are consequences, and God sees everything. Nothing, no, nothing gets away from him. Amen. And it's how Satan fell. You know, Satan was the first um, in heaven and mm -hmm. the, I believe the right hand of God. And yet, because of pride, he fell. He fell. He stopped wanting to serve God and wanted to be God. The pride. Verse 18. The heart that divides wicked plans, feet that are swift to run, sweet feet that are swift in running to evil. Amen. This comes from the enemy for sure. Yes, I was thinking this. This is definitely the works of the wicked one, the evil. And people just don't understand. They don't know. They, they have just, you know.
So I guess we can just follow and whatever the reason may be, you know, we know that they need the Lord. Amen. Proverbs 1 16. For their feet to run to evil, and they make haste to shed blood. Amen. Amen. Again, this is the evil, the wicked. Those that just don't know and understand, they, they can't. Garments. Okay, verse 19. A false witness who speaks lies and one who sows discord among them. Amen. We're still talking about the things that God hates. Amen. Well, this is what breaks up unity. Yes. This is what causes strife and division. Amen. Absolutely. Because we are the body of Christ. We are members of one another. And, and when this happens, it really separates the church. Amen. This is what's happening in our world, in our government, in our schools, in our churches, and in our homes. You know, it's, it's everywhere. These are the things that cause division, as Pastor Mike just said. And, you know, God hates it. You know, there's no unity in this. There's no love. There's no, you know, discussion of, of uh, what the Lord said. We should talk about our issues and love each other and, and help each other. There's none of that at all. Amen. It's the total opposite of what God wants. Comments? In Mark 14, verse 56, for many bore false witness against him, but their testimonies did not agree. Amen. What do you have to say? Because this is what happened to Jesus. They kept trying to find uh, witnesses to bear witness against him. And, false witnesses. Yeah. And there were many false witnesses against him. Trying know? to accuse him of something. Yes. Yeah. Always trying to find something to slip him up or to um, catch him in something to you know, rebuke whatever he was saying or teaching or talking about, you know. And this verse, you know, the witnesses that came against him and um, and there were many, it says, and, and Mark talked about many witnesses um, bore false testimonies against him and witnessed it falsely against him. So, of course, if it's going to happen to Jesus, it's going to happen to us, you know. We're going to see it, you know. Look how Joseph was falsely accused. Yes. Amen. That's why they couldn't agree because they were all false. And so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Pastor Ruth. Amen. <laughs> they were coming up with different reasons to find fault in it. <laughs> Everybody had a different statement, huh? Right. <laughs> different testimony. Right. Who to believe what? What can you believe? They're all false. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Any other comments? Verse 20. My son. Keep your father's command and do not forsake the law of your mother. Amen. 
Amen. These are words of wisdom here. And comments. I guess the law of the mother comes first because the mother is closest to the child. I, that's just something that came to me. Um, but then the father is, is more prone to to learning and 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 um, in this information from other sources rather than just the, uh, <clears throat> the, the the connection to the child which the mother has yay okay. amen that's how it feels for me anyway so that's, that's right out of my own thinking, but it, it seems to fit. <clears throat> yeah. In Ephesians 6, verse 1, children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Amen. Amen. You know, we are the children of Christ. You know, and to be, and obey him is right. Amen. Amen. I mean, we could also say that this is about uh, obeying the authorities that's over us. You know, those in our workplace, those in the church, you know, those that God has put under us or over us. You know, we should obey. You know, so it is right. We may not agree sometimes, but that's okay. We can always bring our agreements to, to each other and talk about them and come to a solution, you know, instead of, you know, like the other verse talked about, you know, slandering and you know, saying evil things and plotting and all those things, We're calling discord among the brethren. This is, you know, this is God's will for us to, you know. Yes. The key phrase this. there is your parents in the Lord. Yes. In the Lord. Absolutely. Right. So that's that's the key. That is that is the way to go. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Okay, verse 21, bind them continuously upon your heart, tie them around your neck, amen. In Proverbs 3, verse 3, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, amen. Amen. Wisdom. We talk about wisdom, you know, and the law and all those things that we know that, you know, we understand what God hates now. And so um, we pray that he binds them around our necks and, and uh, writes them on the tablets of our heart because we know we cannot do it without him. Praise the Lord. Any other comments? Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. Okay. Well, we will stop here for this evening. And we will continue with, uh, we'll finish up songs. I mean, song. We'll finish up Proverbs chapter six next week. Um, thank you all for being on the study. God bless you all. And um, praise the Lord. Let us pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this wonderful study tonight and bringing us all here this evening. And we just thank you for uh, 
your teaching, your guidance, and understanding that you've uh, revealed to us tonight. And we have learned clearly what to do, what not to do, the things that grieve your heart, the things that you hate, and and uh, the wickedness and illness that plagues our country and world and, and the surrounding us. And uh, we just surrender all those things to you. We know, Lord, that none of these things we can do and accomplish on our own. You have to write these things on the tablets of our hearts and, and give us your wisdom and understanding and, and bring us to that place. And I just pray that for each and every person here tonight, that you just bless us and continue to just give us your guidance, your wisdom and understanding and continue to teach us the fear of the Lord because we know the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge and understanding of the Holy One. So I lift up each one tonight, and those that will watch this and listen to this in the future. Uh, I pray for everyone to get a wonderful night's sleep tonight and be blessed in the morning. And we just surrender our whole day tomorrow to you and just have a wonderful Sabbath day. And we give you all the honor and all the praise and all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 God bless everyone. God bless everyone. God bless. God bless. God bless. We, we, we apologize for those technical issues that we dealt with, and it just it just took us out of the study really too much. But. Okay, Pastor Rufus, no, no I need to apologize. We understand <laughs> technical difficulties happen all the time. So. Okay, we Pastor, know, just, you know, just they're want, machines. I just want it's to know okay. how, Yeah. Okay, Great. Pastor. Praise the Lord, you was able to get back on and everything worked out good. So, you know, we're happy with that. So, okay. Thank you. All good. Thank okay. You, Thank you, Pastor. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless. See you tomorrow. God bless. God bless. God bless.